date functions are something that have a bit of a learning curve. And when you actually get into the nitty gritty of dates, there's usually always issues with dates, date time conversions. So I wanted to get past a lot of the core elements and building blocks before we tackled this. Fortunately, what I'm going to show you now isn't uh, rocket science, but it is really valuable knowledge to have. So I'm going to go through a lot of the basic date functionality, uh, and then we're going to use it within a real scenario within our test database with our sales orders table. And I'll show you how to do things like break apart elements of a date um, and calculate the difference between dates and the current day dynamically and so on. So this is going to be packed with a lot of good information here. I'm going to say some basic, another comment, date functionality. So the first thing is, and one of the most important, how do we get today's date in our system? Because that would be very important if we wanted to calculate back potentially someone's age. Potentially we have a field with their birth date, how we calculate their age today so that that changes dynamically. Well, we need to reference the current date within the within the system. So to do this in its very most isolated and basic element, we would say select, and I'm just going to alias this as current date. Select current date is equal to, and this is the function here, get date, and we need to include the parenthesis. So when I run this, you'll see I get the current date and time as per my system. So it's as simple as that, but obviously there's a lot of ways that we can begin to make this more powerful and more beneficial. So we will dive into some of that shortly. Now the next basic piece of functionality that I want to showcase is how to get the current year from this get date that we've just referenced. So we could say select current year or alias and the way we actually extract the year from the get date is we use date name i believe we may have covered this in a very brief detail before and date name is essentially how we get the the text values from date date part may give us the the numeric values but we're using date name so first of all we specify what we'd like to to break out of the date and for us in this case it's a year and again we'll reference get date there and when we run this second query we can see that we get the current year and that's purely broken apart from the get date so already we're managing to use this get date to get some live dynamic data and break apart the relevant elements. So now we will go ahead and get the current month name. So again, we can select current month name and set that equal to, you guessed it, instead of using um, year within the date name, we'll use month. Say so date name and month as our argument there. And then to get the standard date as per our system time, that is get date. So we'll select that. And now we get the current month name as well. A couple more of these to go, and then we'll get into an actual real example with our sales order. Uh, table within test so if you bear with me we'll, we'll move on to that shortly after we cover these two important elements and it's a differentiation here so if we want to get the day of this year it's equal to and then we'll say date name again this time we'll say Date of year, and again from get date. I'll 
and we'll run that and you'll see we get 34 because this is giving us the date of this year being in February the the running day number in numeric integer so that can be very handy in some elements as well for calculations later down the line we'll also say select a number of month and we'll set that equal to date name and we will say day and get date and then that gives us the third day of the month which is correct so that's the basic day functionality now you could argue that it's not that powerful or insightful when it's sort of structured like this and isolated elements and i could agree with that to an extent however it is giving us one of the most fundamental concepts that we use in programming languages to make calculations which is getting the current date and time which is just using this get date and parenthesis now let's look at uh closer to real world example using tabular data so we'll need to ensure that we are in our test database here in the gui and we'll be in sales orders so first of all i'll just map out uh, the the current columns as we want to structure them initially so i will say order id Customer, city, order amount, order date, and for now I'll say from PBO dot sales orders. Okay, and when we query this, we get the standard date format and the data that we're used to. So actually, the first thing that I want to do here is format this date into UK standards. So day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. So let's look at how this looks and it should have forward slash instead of this hyphen. So I'll get rid of this and we'll set a new column to say, we'll just call this a UK date format. We'll say equal to format and order date. I will say day day dash capital capital M dash for lowercase y's. And we'll just need a comma here. And now if we run this. we can see we get the UK date format next to our order date. So we're only just getting started, but that's already helpful. Um, if you did want to look into formatting, you can use this formatting function and specify the order in which you want things. If you do need a bit more pointers, uh, this should be readily available even through the likes of Google uh, to get the date formatting as per your country or your region or culture. So next up, we will just extract the order month from the order date. And there's a very simple way to do this. So I'll say order month is equal to month function and order date there. And now we can run this again. And we get the order month here in numeric value. So that's what we wanted because that could further boost calculations. We see December is displayed as 12, September 9, and so on. So we've extracted that, fantastic. The next thing that we're going to want to do is get the order year. So you guessed it, order year. Instead of using the month function, we will use year. 
specify order date as the argument within our parenthesis. Order date there. Uh, we get the order year. Fantastic. They're all in 2020. Now, the last one, and this is quite a powerful function, we're going to calculate the difference in the days between the order age. So when this order was made between the current date. So in order to do this, we use the date diff function. You can think of that as date difference. First argument, we need to specify what value we'd like in. So, you know, if it was seconds, years, minutes, months, we're just going to put days. That's quite a simple metric considering there's been some time passed since. And order date. And then we'll say get date. So what we're saying here is give me the difference in days between the order date and the current date. And now if we run this, we'll get a full picture with some powerful modifications. So we've got our order ID, our customer, our city, our order amount, and our order date. We've formatted this date column to be in UK format. We've broken out the order month from this original order date column. We've broken out the order year from this original order date column. And we've got the age, so the difference between the current date and when this was purchased. And order aging or aging in general using this sort of date function, date diff, is very powerful because you can start to get things like inventory aging, you know, have a conditional logic, assign values against it so that you can save the company money, look at insights, which products aren't selling. This can be widely used in retail and almost any industry you're going to need to measure aging. So these date functions and especially date diff is a very good one to learn. So there we go. Got a lot of basic functionality covered here. I'd recommend you to save this as a demonstration if you like um, within your file and save within a .sql or .txt text file format, whatever you like. And we've managed to really power up our existing query from sales orders, which wasn't the most powerful and insightful, but starting to look a lot better now. So get used to date functions, play around with them and, uh, and enjoy exploring them.